Before, we talked about regressions as a way of summarizing the correlation in the data. And I gave an example of the correlation between property rights and economic development. And I showed you this plot. Here, we've got property rights on the horizontal axis, economic development on the vertical axis. And we can see there's generally a positive relationship. Countries with higher property rights tend to have higher economic development. Now over here, I've got a regression table that summarizes the same data. Now, here I've got my outcome variable, economic development, log GDP per capita in 1995. Over here are explanatory variables, average protection against expropriation risk, 1985, 1995. This is the same variable that's plotted on the horizontal axis, and this is the same variable that's on the vertical axis. And over here, in these two specifications, these are the only variables I'm looking at. I've just got two variables, property rights and economic development, and what's the relationship between them. So in the picture, we see a positive relationship, and in the table, we see positive numbers, 0.52. That says that in the data, property rights tend to be positively related to economic development. Now this number is just the slope of this line in the picture. That's all this number is. Okay. Now in this specification, we're only using 64 countries in the world. If you used all the countries, or almost all the countries, 110, we're going to get a little bit different line. So we plot, put a more dots in here with more countries. The line's going to change a little bit, but it only changes from a slope of 0.52 to 0.54. Now, that was just the relationship between two variables. And because of this application, researchers in the past have said, look, property rights may matter for economic growth, but other variables matter too, like geography. This is Jared Diamond's famous thesis in Guns, Germs, and Steel. He said, geography really matters. So in this paper, the authors want to know, OK, well, if I looked at countries with similar geography, is there still a positive relationship between economic development and property rights? So first, how are they going to measure what do we mean by geography? Well, one way to do this is how close is your country to the equator? So that's what this variable here, latitude, means. It's smaller, it's zero if you're at the equator, and it increases as you get farther from the equator. So let's look at countries that are just close to the equator and see for only those countries what's the relationship between property rights and economic development. That's what this column here shows us. Okay? If we look at the countries with the same latitude, then we get a relationship of, between property rights and economic development of 0.47. So again, we have a positive relationship. The interpretation of this number is the same as this. It says that countries with higher property rights tend to have higher um, economic development. Now, we also get another number. We get two numbers from this, whereas before we only had one number. This number tells us a similar thing. If we look at countries that have roughly the same property rights, okay, but some of them are close to the equator and some of them are farther from the equator, then we see that there tends to be a relationship between how close you are to the equator and economic growth. So if you're farther from the equator, as latitude increases, okay, as you get farther from the equator, um, you tend to have a higher economic development. So this confirms, in the data at least, one claim that Jared Diamond made about geography smattering. But the point of, the, of this paper is that, look, property rights also matter. Both tend are relate, positively related to economic development. Now you may think that just measuring how close a country is to the equator is a very rough way of defining what we mean by geography. So they're going to put a few more variables into the equation. For example, are you in Asia? Is this a country that's on the Asian continent? Are you on Africa? Are you on some other country? And we see that once you look at countries that are all on the same continent, all close to the equator, there's still a positive relationship between property rights and economic development. Okay. So the key takeaway from this table is that no matter how you look at the specification, meaning which subset of, of countries do you look at, 
Do you look at just all countries overall? Do you look at just countries close to the equator? Do you look at just countries on certain continents also close to the equators? There's always a positive relationship between property rights and economic development. So that's the description of what's in the data. What we want to know next is, is that a causal uh, relationship? Are property rights causing high economic development, or is it something else? That's not what this table is showing us. It's just describing what we see in the data. To learn about causality, we're going to have to do something else.